I mean, after the wedding, uh, we kept, we tried for the baby. I kept trying. You know how it is as a woman, you'd buy so many pregnancy tests, <laughs> so many of them. You will try and try again. And then you're like, okay, you know, it, actually I missed my period. This time around, I am pregnant. And then you go, you buy, you test, it's nothing. It's still the same. And you just give up. You're just like, you know what? Ah, let me just give up. I'm done. I'm done trying. But it took how many years? Lissiri uh, well, is now six years old, literally. So all that, all that while we were still trying until only now. Right. So, yeah, it's been some time. And as much as, I mean, it was disappointing, but it was, it was sad to see how, because she really wanted You're the fruit of the womb God. and it, she, was, she would really, really cry. But yeah. I was just saying, no, um, just leave it to God. You know, in God's timing, uh, everything will, will work out. But you could see how, how you know, how it impacted uh, her. Her joy was really cut uh, short every time she discovers that, um, you know, it's not it's not happening, and uh, but the moment you know you receive the word, um, and that's what we talk about when we say the entrance of the words of God bring light. You know, the moment we heard that in a you know a cu couples who are you know seeking the the fruit of the womb, you know, come. That's why I you know dragged her, and she said, "Oh no, let's not, let's go." No, no, we we no. went. <laughs> Every married couple that does not have children or have children but I want another child be that, that there is a known problem or there is no problem with you who you are just trusting God to have a child in a deeply sacred moment Pastor Alf, the true vessel of God invited all struggling married couples longing for the blessing of parenthood to come forward with hope in their hearts and tears in their eyes Minister Lucky and his beloved wife, as we approach the altar, seeking the divine touch of heaven through the compassionate hands of Pastor Alf. In the name of Jesus. And then, as a result of that, we knew that um, you know God never calls a meeting or even speaks through a servant, uh, and nothing happens. You know, and you know sometimes when you you you're at church and there's an altar call. You're like, you know, people are going to be looking at me, you know, you'll be shy. And then you miss your blessing. If I didn't go that day when men of God said, come, I wasn't going to be carrying a blessing today, to be honest. Like, it was going to miss me. So for me to just, you know what, go, <laughs> do this. <laughs> there we go, yeah. I mean, I remember last year, my wife um, got involved into a, in a car accident, you know, so I'm... Um, Arriving in Cape Town, I was going for a work assignment. I just landed, you know, for a work assignment in Cape Town. God is restoring, you know, has restored stuff. Things are starting to move, you know. And as I land in Cape Town, I hear that and she calls me to say, I've just been in an accident. And I was coming back from a shoot uh, from Venda. We just had this amazing shoot uh, and like it's a wrap. And then we're going back home and then the accident happened. Shocking, I'm, I'm arriving, I'm supposed to work and I, you know, you, you arrive and you're not even an hour in at the place, you have to book, get a flight back. You know, they have to just make arrangements. No, you need, you need to go. And she's in the middle of nowhere in the Bopo accident, so we need to make sure that I, I, I leave Cape Town and I'm going there. And it's interesting that it's the eighth, actually it's almost a year, uh, we're almost approaching a year to when this uh, incident happened. It happens on the, on the 8th of September, right? And then I arrive and then, you know, they're able to move and then to ultimately get to Joburg, you know, and, um, you know, she's just reflecting on this and, you know, as she's reflecting on, on what, what happened. I always <laughs> listen to the Holy Spirit all the time and I always have these conversations with him, right? I'm like, why would I have an accident? I've never had an accident in my whole entire life, but why would I be in an accident? Then somehow I'm hearing, um, like it's, it's more like your life wants to be stolen and then I'm like but why because you're bringing life type of thing like I always have those so I'm like if I'm bringing life then I went and I took a test <laughs> then as I took a test I'm like oh my god I'm pregnant <laughs> that's why okay. and it's interesting right remember uh, uh, it's and, and we look at the nine because some she says no but we have to go to uh, you know a test yeah. take a pregnancy yeah. test you know and uh, okay and we checked the date. It's actually the 9th of the 9th. Yeah. 
it's the 9th of September uh, last year, you know, and then we discover that, hey, you know, she is actually carrying a baby. And Literally, I went to shoot. I didn't know I was pregnant <laughs> after trying so many times. Yeah, because we have been trying. And then I stopped. I was like, you know, you know, like when, when you're trying so hard and you're just like, you know what, I'm giving up. That moment when you're like, I am giving up, that's when it happens. But uh, then we understood that prophetically this was something, you know, because when you see so much strife, so much battles, you know that whatever you are carrying is something very special, uh, very dynamic. And um, this is ba uh, Baby Liruo, you know, who uh, was recently, um, you know, dedicated to, to, to God. So uh, literally before he was even born, the enemy wanted to steal his life and to steal his mother's life, you know. So we understood, and whenever we see these challenges for us, we realize that, you know, there's something bigger that God, uh, you, know, you know, is doing. But because there is a grace and a covering upon our lives, you know, so we knew that, you know, God is actually at, at work and there's something amazing. So hence I was surprised, but why? I've got an assignment in Cape Town. I, have to, I can't even do that assignment. I had to be home. And then we had to be home a day after the accident. Uh, she was at home and we discovered on the 9th of the 9th that uh, actually there's a, there's a little man who is actually uh, coming to, you know, on, on earth and also during the pregnancy I mean we had a see so like well closer to giving birth uh, the doctor was saying okay at first it was like the baby was sitting well right and then jiggy, jiggy, the baby is now bridge right and then right during labor the baby was still bridge and I didn't want to go for a c-section I was like I was so I, I, I didn't tell anybody I, I, I didn't call my mom I didn't tell it was just him who knew that my baby is bridge and God. <laughs> I'm not telling anyone <laughs> because if I'm telling somebody, then I'm sealing it to say that's the problem, right? But if I tell God, I know he's, you know, he's going to solve it. And then I'm in hospital now. It's 11 o'clock. I'm in labor. I'm still bridge. I don't tell, no I don't tell nobody. <laughs> and then uh, you tell dad that we are, we are, we are in hospital. And then dad says, uh, are you fine? I'm like, yes, I'm <laughs> fine. I still don't tell him <laughs> that my baby is bridge. <laughs> and then a few minutes towards uh, giving birth, then I was like, I just went to the, because we went to the, to the doctor now. And I say, oh, we went to the doctor. Now the baby's sitting in the right position. <laughs> That's all I said. No, but so, <laughs> dad said to her, yeah. Is the baby now okay? Okay, yes, yeah, so the baby now is okay. Ba like, is the baby now okay? Know? <laughs> you know, so, yes. yeah, so it's like, is, is it okay That's when I'm now? like, the baby is sitting in the right position. He was bridge. That's only when I actually said it to someone else except him. <laughs> yeah. So, so dad was actually, I mean, dad said to her, I am there with you, you know, literally. And um, that would have been a very expensive exercise, you know. That's the office is spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Like literally just to him that day saying, I am there with you. I just knew that everything is going to be fine. And that just gave me so much faith. Like literally I was like, I will see my baby. I will see my baby. That's it. Every other thing, I was not going to have the cesarean section. I mean, I was not going to. I was just going to get the baby. That's it. And I was going to give birth naturally. So I just knew my baby will be here with me. That's it. Dad says he is here with me. That's it. You know, when a man of God says, I am there with you, you know, whatever could have been complicated, you know, it just became it's smooth. smooth because our, our father is anointed for difficult matters. So that was a difficult matter. Uh, the baby was born, you know, um, successfully. Yeah. It was absolutely good birth. Uh, the baby was back in position, you know. Yeah. Beautiful, bouncing baby. And, you know, we thank God. Just everything just went um, according to, to, to plan. So that basically became one of our, you know, uh, something to celebrate um, in, in this particular uh, year. But lo and behold, God also still does amazing things, you know, because um, this year, as I said earlier, is our year of multiple fronts, breakthroughs. So, I mean, we've been seeing breakthroughs upon breakthroughs. My wife had actually decided that, you know what, I'm going to uh, become a full-time mother. Mom. You know, <laughs> I want to be a house mom. I don't know where she get that. Uh, <laughs> ambition you know she wants to she says no i just want to be oh, at home i want to be still you know be with the babies and all stuff oh. but i think god had his own um unique plans i mean she had been in the entertainment space um acting for i think it's because almost. i have like because you're pregnant you go and leave right 
So when you're on leave, you're at home, you are with the kids, you know, you know, enjoying spending time with the kids and whatnot. And then when it's time to going back to work now, you're just like, mm, I'm not sure, maybe let me be at home. And only for me to realize, you know what, no, production to say, actually, I sent in the resignation letter. <laughs> Just she was saying. going ahead with, going ahead with it for real. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. like, um, I'm gonna be at home now. I'm not gonna be coming back as an actress and an end, and also behind the scenes because I was doing like subtitling. Then they 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 don't say anything. They then later on they call me to say, uh, we can't let you go. Please come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then in going back now, it was going back as not just as an actor only, but also as a director. So. I was like, at first I chickened out a little bit, <laughs> telling him, I was like, you, I don't know if I'll be able to balance both of them, both acting and directing, because it requires a whole lot of, you know, acting as his own, and then directing is another cap, also you're carrying another cap. So I was like, yo, let me see. Then I went back and here I am, sitting here, um, a director and actor at the same time. And that's absolutely amazing. I mean, just seeing um, some of the stuff that she's done, some of the biggest uh, shows, uh, in the in the country, I mean that she, she's been even casting, you know, casting, being a casting director and directing uh, now the show that she was actually acting. You know, she's um, she does little acting but more directing, and it's amazing, you know, because she's a daughter of Apostle Africa that um, you know her directing is just on, on on another level. Even the colleagues there are saying, "Wow, you know, we we are just blown away by you know how you how you do it." You know? Just have a special grace, you know, for it. And uh, today, I mean, we're standing here, um, and uh, we're grateful to God, you know, because we've seen God restoring us one step at a time. You know, um, we remember a particular I IVP. I think our very first IVP, you know, that we, we went to, um, and then this IVP, we had, um, we're still in this little apartment, and I remember Bishop Jay speaking and saying the place you are is too small for you you know and i'm listening to her preaching in one of the morning devotion services you know i'm listening to this and that basically impacted me so strongly to say now now it's time and uh before that i think a year before right um pastor rodney said i dreamt something and you know she he tells her that you know i saw you giving an offering for a home a Thanksgiving offering for for your home, and that basically became a trigger to say uh -uh, something is happening in the spiritual realm. God is revealing it to our leader. God is also talking to a bishop about about it. We need to do something, and we put a seat. Uh, so we raised the seat. We raised the seat to actually for a home, and we decided to go a step further to go to an IVP. And in that IVP, I remember we we had even keys of a property that we we're looking for. You know, we put it there, and this IVP was specifically for a home. You know, we wanted a home. That's what we wanted. We're saying that place is too small for us. God, we need we need a turnaround. You know, and um, uh, God created an opportunity for us to be with our men of God. And uh, in one of the conversations that we had with our men of God, He asked us, "What would you like God to do for you?" And we said, "I said, you know, men of God, I have made it, married a princess. She's a, a princess in real life. You know, um, I wanted to start living like a princess. You know, she. I needed to to be in a home that she can be comfortable. She could be happy with." And she said, no, you'll st start seeing what God will do. You know, God will do it for you. And being in that IVP just sealed it for us. I remember coming out of the IVP. Remember what we did that immediately? One of the was Sunday. The last service. The service, yeah. Yes. We went house hunting, <laughs> literally, on the day. And we, like, sent pictures. We're like, okay, this is the house we like in an end. And then later on, that's when we're like, oh, we got the house, but it's not that one, but it's another one. Yeah. But the beauty of it is that, you know, because at AMI we're taught faith, you know, you're taught that God, your God can do the impossible, that nothing is impossible for God. We didn't aim for places that we could afford, you know, we actually went where we, we knew that, uh, no, we must go to places we cannot afford because now we're tapping into the grace upon our men of God, right, because um, our men of God is anointed for difficult matters. And I remember in that year, I, I was praying and I, I had a very straightforward prayer with God. That, that's the most specific prayer I've, I've really prayed. And I said, God, um, in five days time, it's going to be my birthday. And what I need for that birthday is that home. 
and I prayed. And I remember the owner, the, the developers, because this home that we are in was actually um, some developers build it and all kinds of stuff. So it was the people who build the estate, you know, where we, where we live. You know, so it's really well situated. The positioning really was, was quite strategic. And I think when we started uh, looking for this home, I mean, they were abroad. They were saying, no, we're not interested. They didn't want to talk. And I remember now, five days later, we're celebrating my birthday. And um, the men of God actually had sent us a, a message, um, you know, um, like singing happy birthday. And in it, he starts praying. He says, may God give you the desires of your heart and, and all kinds of stuff. You know, 21 minutes later, after we received that message, I remember we're celebrating 21 minutes later, we get a message actually from the developers to say, um, the house is approved. And that for me was the greatest birthday gift ever, you know, because it happened at the moment where I went to my altar alone. I didn't go with her, you know, and I made a specific prayer. And five days later, as per, you know, the request from God, God delivered it and we really celebrated, um, you know, God for what he has done. You know, so we, we are seeing restoration and we're seeing God allowing us to move from glory to glory. Business also getting restored, you know, um, our family being restored, you know, our, our daughter was not living with us. God created a way, you know, school and everything, just coming together one step at a time, just indicating that sometimes things may not happen at the pace that we want to, to happen. And I think the greatest lesson for us was that in most cases as Christians, we see God's hand, we see what God can do for us now. And once God has done it, you know, because we have not sought his face, we sought his hand. We want the blessing of God, but not the God of the blessing. You know, um, we sometimes very a short term or uh, short sighted and, you know, we limit basically. We uh, learned actually when we were at AMI. At first it was like, you know, we were looking for God's hand, right? And then later on, just going there over and over, then you realize, you know what, you have to have the relationship with God and that relationship then bring all these other things. So he says, seek, seek me first, and then all these other things will be added unto you. So that's that. We, we were like, okay, the hand of God, the hand of God, the hand of God, the hand of God. And a lot of people go there going like, the hand of God, the hand of God, only to realize, no, actually, you need the heart of God first. And then once you get the heart, and then he will add all these other things. You, you take care of his uh, affairs, and then he takes care of your affairs. Pretty much that's what we learned. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for, for, it's been that journey because, you know, we, we were literally in AMI for, for years, year on year on year on year. And sometimes we're not really seeing the things that we want to see immediately. I mean, we're losing a house, you know, but we're still, we're still there. We're still, we, you know, we're losing the car. It doesn't, it looks like nothing is happening. But God behind the scenes is orchestrating things. At the time when we were looking for a house, I'm also here for my brother. He says, I, I saw a house that can suit you so well. And I'm saying, huh, let's see it. And it's the house that we're in now. But my brother, even for him to even say, I saw a house that would suit you. I, I feel like it's a whisper from God, just orchestrating to say, here's a, a house that I'm ordained for my children. And the men of God praying for us, for us also believing God to say, we don't have the money, but we'll actually pay for an IVP. And go there to say what God has been doing for others, you know, we will also sacrifice, you know, and, and seek God and know that our God can do it for us. And today, God has done it for us, and I know that this is just the beginning. If He can do it for us, we know for sure that He can do it for you. you know? So what we're encouraging you to do is seek the face of God, not only the hand of God. When you seek God consistently, God is faithful. He's a prayer answering God. He's a destiny changing God. In our story, our story has been changing as a result of being consistent and being persistent against all odds and of course being connected to a, a special house like AMI. And we, we're grateful for, for this incredible altar. And I say, men of God, for me, you know, having you in my life is it, not a privilege only, right? But it's, a, it's an advantage. You know, I am able to stand today and we're able to stand as a family today because we've got a man of God who hears from God. And I mean, this year we're saying it's a year of multiple fronts breakthrough. We're absolutely, have been seeing that in a, an incredible way. So I just want to say thank you so much, Dad, and thank you for your call. I mean, for you just answering your call, you didn't know that there was going to be an Azwi somewhere that was going to need your prayers, that was going to need just your word to say everything is fine, that I am there. I just want to thank you for that. And Mom also for standing with Dad 
I mean, I always say like, mom, yes, you are definitely strong. <laughs> to stand next to a man of God definitely takes strength. So I just want to thank you, mom. Words uh, fail us, you know, when it comes to just, um, you know, thanking God for what he, he does and he has done for us. Um, I always say, you know, for me, you are an advantage. My life without you would, would be less um, of a life, you know. Uh, today I, I can stand, sometimes I stand in rooms where I just say, God, how did I even end up in these rooms? In conversations there, I look at them and say, this can only be God. But being a son of a prophet and uh, having a leader like yourself, we, we look to you and you're a great example to the body of Christ, the body of God, um, the body of Christ, of what, what it means to work with God. So um, having a role model uh, like uh, like you just um, allows us to just see how things um, you know are and your journey with mom is just an incredible journey you know your journey is an indication that we've got a living God we can take a person from really the dustbins of life and takes them to the highest place and um, you know when they say there will be a distinction between those who serve God and those who do not we see it in you and we are partakers of it and I thank God and I just pray that he may continue to recharge you and even take you higher than what you can even ever imagine, you know, because you are such a blessing to so many different uh, people. Our family is where it is today because we have a prophet in our lives and we just thank God for you. Amidst the backdrop of adversity, the theme of that blessed week resonated deeply. On your altar, you shall find the message held a promise, a beacon of hope that pierced through the veil of despair and suffering that the devil had cruelly woven around their lives. The anointed shepherd prophesied unto her situation in her home. The servant of God spoke words that soared high above the challenges and trials that had plagued her for so long. In the presence of the Almighty, the couple's spirits were stirred by the power of a prophetic utterance, a heavenly oracle that foretold a miracle awaiting them. This prophetic word was more than just a promise. It was a lifeline, a testament that the God of Pastor Alf Lukawu, in his infinite grace, remains steadfastly by our side even in the bleakest of hours.